Good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. I hope you're ready to worship. I know I am. Here's some announcements to get us going. So listen up. Tonight, after the PM service, there's going to be a pounding for Dr. Che and his family. So make sure and bring any canned goods, any gift cards, any paper goods that would be great to go in the household. Come join us as we fellowship and welcome this family the Calvary style way. How exciting this next Wednesday is mid-month meal. So we're going to be having Mexican stack and sopa pia cheesecake for dessert. Woo! Can't wait. Anyways, make sure you come, bring your family, it's $5 a person, and three or more gets you for $15. So, come and join the fellowship and the great, awesome food. This coming Friday, from 10 to 11.30, we're going to be having another coffee house. We could use your adult help. So, if you're interested, please contact me or just show up at the church around 9.45. We'll give you something to do. There's always room for more people on board. And speaking of coffee, this next Saturday, it's going to be the Harvest Festival Parade, and we're going to be handing out coffee and cocoa in the morning. This is an awesome ministry and a perfect opportunity for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, giving out warm cups of cocoa and coffee. We're going to be starting at 9 o'clock, so if you want to be a part of that, make sure and come and be His hands and feet. That is all the announcements we have this morning, so let's worship. Is it drafting here to anybody? All right, church, let's stand up and greet one another. Good morning. Good to have you here this morning. I'm going to say the first thing so I don't forget the ladies Bible study that's usually on Sunday night tonight and tonight only it's canceled for other things going on so the proven ladies Bible study canceled for tonight. Good to have you here this morning. Good to have our live stream family here. If you brought you a donut and some coffee I hope you enjoy that donut and coffee. Yeah there you go Zoe. But uh, good to have you here. I want to bring up a couple things. The boot is at the welcome center. You can't give it to somebody but you can put money in the boot. That's for our Boys and Girls Ranch. And we're asking if you could drop a five or whatever you could drop in there because $5 gets one kid four meals. That's five. So if you could do that for the month of October, we're raising money for the Texas Boys and Girls Ranch for that. And also, do not forget tonight, as John so eloquently brought up, you might not have got the announcements because you were too enamored in his makeover. But please come back tonight, having a great uh, worship service, and then uh, pounding Dr. Che and welcoming him to the family. So come on back tonight, be a great fellowship afterwards. I don't even know what time football is on, but who cares? So uh, come back tonight for a great fellowship. Uh, also, uh, don't forget that the BSM is going to be, we're feeding the BSM, that's a whole big project. And so uh, pray about helping out somehow, or scrubbing some potatoes, baking some potatoes, uh, going up there with us and serving some potatoes. So it would be a blessing as well. 
And again, good to have you here. Good to have a worship service going on. I hope you did come to worship this morning, and that way you can get that fire going again in you. I know it's been cloudy and gloomy, but man, I tell you, it's a great day to be in the Lord's house. One of the ways we pray, and that's through individuals. We can reach out to people around us and lift them up. You can come down here. Kim and I are going to be down here praying. You're welcome to join us. However you'd like to do it, but let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Master, I just come to you, Father, just thanking you so much for this day and the many blessings that you've given us. Father, we just want to thank you for the moisture that you've sent our way and for the sunshine that you've brought us. And Father, I just come to you just thanking you for letting us be in your house again. And Father, I just want to lift up the praise band to you, Father, and ask that... Uh, that the music just do nothing but just honor and glorify you. And I just want to lift my brother Steve up to you and ask that you'll just hide him behind the cross and just lay on his heart what you would have him to say. And, Father, I just ask that you'll just be with the ones that's, that's traveling. Father, I just ask that you'll just give them traveling grace. And, Father, for the ones that's in the hospital, we just ask that you'll just put your healing hand upon them and, and that nothing be and nothing but your will be done in their life. And, Father, pray for the ones that's lost loved ones. I just pray that you'll just draw them a little closer to you and just comfort their hearts. And, Father, I just ask that you'll just go with us now through the rest of this service. Forgive us of our sins. I ask these and all of the blessings for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Children, why don't you come on down for the children's moment. Question. Can everyone face me? Awesome. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of way back here. You guys are looking out here. Well, how are you today? Did you have a good weekend and a good week? Everything go good? Well, I had a story that I heard this weekend that I thought you guys would find kind of funny. So there was a, uh, a mom and a dad, and there was a grandma and a newborn baby. And so the newborn baby, not really newborn, I'm sorry, they learned to speak just a little bit. So they had learned to say mama and papa, right? But the nana was so excited. She's like, okay, this baby's going to call me nana. I am so thrilled. So whenever the baby finally called her nana, she said, nana, no, no. Isn't that weird? Why would they say nana, no, no? It's because whenever the little baby when they were walking around they'd put their hand up on the side no no and then they'd you know be walking in the wrong direction and they'd say no no and so the baby knew nana is nana no no so we all probably know a couple of people in our lives who probably scold us probably a little bit more than someone else right someone who's always you are like why are you so hard on me why are you always telling me no so in here in uh, hebrews 12 Verse 11, it says, No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So what that's saying is that sometimes when you hear no-no, it doesn't always feel good. You think, well, I didn't always do that wrong, but what this is saying, and the word is truth, right? Yeah? What it's saying is that discipline shows love. So Nana No-No probably loved that baby a lot, right? Was trying to train that baby and show him exactly how they should go and they didn't want him to get hurt, right? So Nana No-No loved that baby. Maybe whenever the baby grows up a little bit, they won't call him Nana No-No. But in any case, this is saying that they love them. And how much more does God love us than that Nana even loves that baby? God loves us more than anyone could ever love us. And so whenever he disciplines us, and sometimes when he says no, no, 
Sometimes it hurts and it's painful, but later on, we realize that it's actually for our good. Right? Yeah? All right, let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for guiding us every single day, and thank you for loving us in such a way that, though at the time we might not understand it, we know that your direction is true and that your direction is love. God, help us throughout the rest of this week to apply this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we all, uh, we all need discipline sometimes, and even though it's hard, we, we need it. And if God is all that we're after, then we should accept that and, and go with it. So you can stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship this morning as we sing. You are all I'm after.
us to understand that we are alive because of you today. Not only are we alive physically and worldly, but God, we are alive spiritually because you set us free. So God, whenever discipline comes, may we take that because you are our great teacher. God, whenever struggles come, may we take that and we use them to grow our faith to grow our endurance. God, you are who we are. That should be the answer whenever someone says, who are we? In your name I pray. Amen. And now some good worship. I don't know how many of you pay attention to commercials. This is off of a commercial. This happens to be Swiffer. But the little kid giving the stuff to animal a trim, you know how kids and scissors are. Anybody relate to that? Anybody get a custom haircut? John? And so what's the big deal? But then it goes on to this. This is the part I love. Let's see if I can trim sisters here. Anybody understand the word mischievous? Anybody that way? You're, you're not quite an angel. You're really close, but there's just a little honoriness in you how about that word come on somebody gordon ray i know it was you yeah steve osborne absolutely yeah mason without a doubt but that's how it is man there's you're almost a goody goody but there's that little nugget of darkness that's just got to come out and that's why this title just not an angel but close I want to talk to you today just kind of a little bit about that, about how we take that. Well, I'm not even near an angel, but the Bible says a little bit different. I, I got a little bit mischievous yesterday. We were setting a couple of church signs, and the dirt was really just plowed and fresh, and the guy blasting the hole with the water jet was just minding his own business, and I picked up a dirt clod and just kind of chunked it over there and hit him on the boot, just being, you know, might as well help you out with the mud. And, of course, I forgot he had a high-pressure wand with water coming out of it. And he just kind of shot it over there near me and hit the mud and kind of splashed up on me. I'm like, well, that's enough of that. Kind of made me quit being mischievous real quick. But we've got a little honoriness in us sometimes. It just keeps us from being what God said. You guys are like that, that angel. We're just a little bit lower. And, and I got that from the scriptures and let me just tell you, even last week when John sang from Casting Crowns, Who Am I? What an amazing title to the story we're going through even today. Who am I? Let me remind you, because a lot of times we say the words, but do we get the meaning? Do we really understand what we're saying? Well, a lot of times we can sit up there going, watermelon, 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 watermelon. I don't know what I'm singing, watermelon. And you've got to really get into these words and understand what they're singing. Last week, this is what it said. Who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever-wandering heart? Not because of who I am, but because of what you've done. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I'm a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still you hear when I'm calling 
you catch me when I'm falling, you tell me who I am, I'm yours. And I don't know about you, that's a peaceful song, though it should get us kind of riled up, because truly, I don't think anybody in their heart of hearts wants to be alone. Now, you might say there's some loners out there. I don't think anybody wants to be alone. There are times you want to have some quiet time and get away time, but to be alone totally every single day, God didn't create us to be that way. He created us out of his passion for us. And as that song was written in our modern time, there was a writer a few thousand years ago by the name of David. He wrote some amazing passages in the Bible. And some of them you're just like, ah, that's really good, but some of them you really need to lock into. So I'm in, I'm going to read Psalm 8, the entire psalm. We might have to get some water passed out. It's all nine verses, so you guys might just have to take a break and we'll just bring some snacks in. All nine verses of Psalm 8. But they have got some deep, deep meanings in there. And David was just in awe of who God was. And it's tough to describe sometimes when you just had one of those amazing events, one of those amazing times, to take a worldly word and and attach it to something out of this world. And that's what David was trying to do in Psalm 8. He was trying to attach the grandness of God and use an earthly word, and he just couldn't do it. So if you got this Psalm 8, if not, I'm going to help you out a little bit. I'll get there for you. You can maybe read along with me and maybe absorb these words through Psalm 8, the entire psalm. And it, if you think it sounds familiar, it's, it's what's, what do we call it in, the, in that book underneath the pew? It's a hymn. Yes, this is a hymn song. Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Uh, though the praise of your children, in, through the praise of your children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than angels. I need you to really remember that because though we don't think we're worthy, the scripture says that's where our status is, believe it or not. And crown them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all the flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What an amazing psalm David writes in trying to encompass who God is in his life. The psalm that, that, that just somehow doesn't quite really grasp the grandness. You know, a lot of times when somebody does something so overwhelming for you and all you can think of are the words, thank you, they fall so short. When somebody does something so amazing for you, that's like, all I can say is thank you. God, that doesn't come close. David was trying to tell them about God and who God was in his life and he stands amazed that the God of creation, the Yahweh, that that ultra holy name of God, Yahweh, that's who he was speaking to, would pay attention to these frail sinners on this planet, that God would focus and here's the word I put for me because we always, if you have a spouse, you love them. But there's a word that God says that he does to us with his love. And that word is lavish. I don't know if you've ever heard that word with love attached. That you would lavish love on somebody. Now, grandparents, I know you love your grandchildren. And parents, you love your child. But to lavish love, and this is the example. You you pull that thimble out. And God... God, just give me a little bit of your love. And you lift it up to him, and God's got this five-gallon bucket going, but, but I want to lavish you. I want to lavish you. All you have is a thimble. Okay, here it comes. And he overflows his love into us, a, a lavish love that just coats us and soaks us. Because let me tell you, and I got a little passion in the first service, God did not create us to hate one another. God created us out of love. He didn't create us to gossip about one another, to beat one another down with our sarcastic talk. He truly created us out of that lavish love, to love one another. And yes, you, you've remembered as I do Las Vegas. And Steve, what about that? 
I, I can't answer. We live in an evil world. We live in a fallen world. And evil is going to happen. That doesn't mean we box ourselves up and go, well, that didn't work. Those people need love lavished on them. Because a lot of Christians are like, well, you know, they deserved it, I guess. Nobody deserved that. They, they went to a concert to rejoice and to sing and have a good time. And evil came into their lives and took lives. They need love lavished. And that's what David's trying to get this point. He, he, he wants to reveal through this one psalm just some amazing things. And of course, we keep it simple and small. We don't think we can handle more than three is what all the learned people say. So number one, David wants to re remind us about the creation of God. When he looks up in the moon and the stars, look at your heavens and what your fingers have made. I see the moon and the stars that you've created. Scientists and philosophers have always tried to debunk God, to dispute him, to dispel him on what he's done. Genesis 1.1, if you want to get down to the very simple of things, in the beginning, well, where did the beginning begin? In the beginning. If you're going to be all smart with me, I'll jump a little smartness back on you. Where's the beginning? Right there at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And these scientists, these philosophers are just trying to dispel it and so there was a mathematician scientist, kind of a smart guy by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. Anybody ever hear of him? Kind of a smart guy, kind of an important guy. But he was an amazing Christian. He loved the Lord. But in his circle of friends was an atheist who, who had no problem telling Isaac he was a doofus when it came to knowing God or believing in God. That the, the universe was created by, it just happened. Boom, and it was there. Bang, and it was there. And Sir Isaac was just trying to figure out how to give an example to his friend, and so he came up with this idea. He went to a carpenter and said, I need you to make for me the most precise to scale copy of the universe. I mean, the best wood, the best paint, the best rods and distance, the circumference has to be perfect of the universe. You need to go all out and I will pay you whatever. So sure enough, the carpenter got busy and he did it. A few weeks later, Sir Isaac came back and it was amazing how this, this constellation, these planets looked perfect. And so he took it to his house and set it right there, boom, on his dining room table. And went on about his life. Went on about everything. And a few weeks later, his atheist friend just kind of popped in one evening. And Sir Isaac welcomed him in and, and, in and paid no attention to the table. And he was talking away and he turned around and his friend was just staring at this, at this massive, beautiful universe. And he's like, wow, that's amazing. Who made that? And Sir Isaac looked at him and said, I don't know. It just appeared. He's like, no, 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 that's just, that's just beautiful. Who made that? And Sir Isaac said, no, I, I just got up one morning and boom, there it was. No, no, that's not true. Somebody had to make that. It's here. I see it. Who made it? And Sir Isaac looked at him and replied, I don't know who made it. It just happened by accident. What an amazing discovery that his friend found out. From that story, I, I found this. If you're going to have a design, there's got to be a designer. There has to be. If you have a creation, there's got to be a creator. It just didn't pop up one day. I know if you have a child and you go into the room, how did, the, how did this happen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it just happened. Who left the refrigerator door? Uh, I, I don't know. It must have popped open. Uh, I don't know. You do know. Things just don't happen. They just don't poof. Magic. And, and what a great story, he said. You've got a creation, you've got a creator. In Psalm 19, 1, the heavens are telling the glory of God. They are a marvelous display of his craftsmanship. It's been said that we take the stars and the constellations for granted. Just real quick in a survey, how many of you at least this past week looked up at the stars? It's kind of a trick question. Because they were pretty tough to see. But when you finally saw them, you're like, wow, that's amazing. Because for the past few nights, they haven't been there and it's been cloudy. But when the, the clouds break, you're like, oh, there they are. You just got to stand in awe of them. 
that God created them all. The Bible says that God made two great lights, gr the greater light for the day and the lesser light for the night. He made stars also. And, you know, just think about this. The moon is precisely where it needs to be in distance from the earth. If it was any further away, the ocean would become stagnant. Fish couldn't survive. If it was any closer, the waves would be tidal waves. There would be massive flooding and earthquakes. But it's precisely where it needs to be because God designed it that way. He designed you. Who am I? It sounds like a very simple series, Who Am I? But do you know how complex we are? I just asked you a couple weeks ago to take a moment and look in that mirror sometime during this journey. And don't scream or don't go, yeah, you know. But take a look at you and figure out the complexity of you. Just the movement of your hand, what it takes for that brain to think about that, to, to go down and squeeze your hand and do a fist or pee, you know. It just doesn't happen. You're so complex. And he created you that way. He said that. Who are you, God, that you would even think about us? That you would give us any thought? Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote this, that we seem to take for granted all that God has created. I wonder why is that? Well, it's always up there. It'll be up there forever. I don't have to worry about the stars. I don't have to worry about... I, we, what else do we take for granted? Did you take for granted getting up this morning that you were just going to get up? That this structure, this body was just going to spring into action? That you didn't get... I think it's called bedtime pain. When you go to bed somehow during the night, you end up with a pain in the morning. Don't look next to you either. But you have an out, and you're like, oh, I didn't go to bed with that. I've got a bed pain. I don't get this. And we take for granted breathing and walking and moving. We're just, it's just going to happen. Who's to say it's just going to happen? Life does change. We, we are a mist and a vapor. We're here for a moment, then we're gone. When you laid your head on that pillow, everybody in your family was going to rise the next morning and be an amazing attitude, and there was going to be no pains or problems. Life changes in the snap of a finger. Emerson was right. We do take things for granted. You have made us a little lower than angels. And I see some of you going, that's me. Just a little lower, that's me. I've almost got a complete halo. But there are those times in my lives that I wasn't so holier than thou. I was more hellion than holy. In the first service, they got a chuckle because there was crutchers here. And we know about the crutchers. But what about you? What about that place in your life where you were a little more hellion than holy? Maybe it's right now. Maybe you're holding on to that griping, gossipy anger and like, you know, Lord, they did me wrong or I've been done wrong. And God said, but if you'll just let go of that, I'm trying to lavish my love on you. But I can't because you're all bottled up. You've, you've pulled that black blanket over your head. You've checked out on life. God said, but I need you to be me in flesh. I created you in my image. And my image isn't behind a cloak or a cape of darkness. My image walks in the light. And darkness can't stand that. Where are you, church, sometimes? We have to wonder. We've got to remember that our Creator created us. And He created us fearfully. And He created us wonderfully. I, I try to picture this conveyor belt of you in heaven that if somehow you didn't turn out right, He pushed the button, you were gone, and another one drops down and goes, okay, maybe this one's better. Maybe the new improved model is better. No, there's only, I hope to hear an amen, there's only one of you in the world. Amen. There's only one of you. And he fearfully created you and you alone to be in his image, to walk in that love and to speak in that love and to share that love. But church, sometimes we are hard pressed to show that love. Well, Steve, you know, it was a bad week. I, I know, I was, I was in it. I was in the week you were in. I weren't in your shoes and you weren't in mine, but I, I was there all week too. That doesn't change my love factor for the world. People are going to be 
people. The phrase is, church would be a whole lot funner without all them people. Because sometimes we can just get on people's nerves and we can get all selfish and kind of up in people's business. Oh, big Gary Crutcher had a little talk and he was trying to get my attention and finally he did. I just kind of got right up in his face and I said, huh? He's like, hey. Sometimes people, we got to get in people's business and say, hey, God loves you. What's your problem, man? He has lavished you in his love and his mercy. He sent his one and only son for you and you're walking around. And, and I'm re- I finished this book by Max Lucado. Anxious for Nothing is the title. And in it, this one phrase, rich people are going to be served lemons and poor people are going to be served lemons and boys are going to be served lemons and girls are going to be served lemons. Everyone's going to be served lemons and here's the hook. But you don't have to suck them. I, I have to agree with that. We, we made it into, well, just make lemonade. Well, I don't, I don't think that's right. I think the devil is one of the best lemon servers out there. Here's a lemon over your relationship. Here's a lemon over your kids. Here's a lemon over your work. And we're like, oh, I guess I just got to suck on that one. You don't have to. God created you to love. And in love, he, he cares for you. And that's one of those things that, that sometimes you think it's a no-brainer. Parents, do you care for your kids? Sure you do. Grandparents, your grandkids? Absolutely. Spouses, you care for your spouse. But God cares for us. So beyond our understanding that we've got to go back to that word lavish. What are people that you would think about them? Mere mortals that you would care about us. Because he created us. He's our creator. And he lavishes his love on us. We literally walk around as little thimbles waiting for that bucket to be poured over us and we're like, oh, I don't want all that. Oh, whoa, I don't need that. Oh, that's being selfish. He's like, but I want to lavish you. I mean, let's think about it, church. Let's get to something we can all relate to. Money. Just raise your hand if you've got enough of it. You absolutely got enough. You don't want another dime. Okay. And just what if that person walked in the door with just buckets I said, man, I just got some money. I just want to, can I pour it on you? And like, oh, no, 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 just just give me a little, just give me a few coins. That's all I need. You'd be like, no, give me my bucket and theirs. That's who we are. We want to be lavished with things that make our lives different. God's love will make our lives different. We have to understand that. The God who created the universe wants to lavish us in his love. That's who we are. And so I googled that word universe and and tried to get a scope of about the universe and being a scientist that I'm not, I I just said, hello Siri, how big's the universe? And she replied, the universe is approximately 93 billion light years long. Well, how long's a light year? 5.2 trillion miles is one light year. And the universe is 93 billion light years long. It's going to take more than a rocket fuel of gas to get to the end. It is so gigantic beyond our scope of comprehending. But we have to understand who is God that who created that is mindful of us. Whatever give us the, the time of day as we say. But he created us and he wants us to be in his care. He does care for us. Rick Warren, the author of Purpose Driven Life, said this. Why did God do all this? Why did he bother to go to all the trouble of creating a universe for us? Because he loves us. This kind of love is difficult to fathom. But it's fundamentally reliable that God never lies and his love never runs out. Oh, goodness. Now, now, couples, I know sometimes we have a little spat and our love might not be shown as, as readily as it usually is. Couples, are you with me? I know it might be a hypothetical thing in your life, but sometimes couples have spats. That doesn't replace the love. And God, just because you anger God, he's like, oh, I'm taking that back. I'm not going to lavish you today. He lavishes us every day. He loves us every day. Isaiah 46 says these words, I have carried you since you were born. I have taken you from birth 
Even when you are old, I will be the same. Get this, folks. Even when your hair turns gray or loose, I will carry you and I will care for you and I will, li- and I will, wi- and I will take care of you till the very end of time. That's the kind of love we all want. To be taken care of. To be saved to the very end of time. He says, try me and test me and see if I don't open up the floodgates and pour them over you. And yet we won't try him and test him. We'll be testy. Oh, how testy we will become when things don't go our way. It was kind of good this morning after the first service. I got a little blessing. Little Zoe walks up with a big old box of donuts. Take one. Take one. I'm like, well, I can't pass up a donut even though I'm greeting people. I'm like, uh, uh, so I stuck my thumb in it and I'm greeting people with a donut on my thumb. I mean, it's great conversation, but you know what I got at the end of greeting? I got me a donut, man. And I'm like, man, I, I didn't deserve that donut, but Zoe's like, hey, just take one. I think sometimes God's saying, it's here. Take it. Oh, but I'm, I'm right in the middle of Oh, can I put that off for a little bit? Can I put it underneath a napkin and I'll eat it later? He's like, man, just, I want you to take it now. I want to lavish you now. And things, I think sometimes in the course of our life, we fall asleep over the lavishing of his love. It's like, ah, uh, I'm getting kind of old of that lavishing love. I get, get kind of used to it. But what if he said, I'm just going to lavish you once and that's it? Oh, the anticipation in us would be, we couldn't hold it back. Is it today? Are you going to lavish me today? I want it today. Because think about the things he did. Before we came into this world, he made the world. And he made it inhabitable. He made it perfect. Before we needed salvation, he made salvation possible. Before we needed instruction and guidance, he made the Bible. Before we walked through the valley of the shadow of death, he made his rod and his staff to comfort us. Before we enter into eternity, he made gates for us to walk through good and faithful servant that's how much he loves you that's that's who you are i don't know if you're in an identity crisis or you're rock solid in who you are i know who i am man i hope you get out there and tell people that you're a you're a follower of god because think about this his son who came and hung on that cross that didn't have to who took every single one of your sins and even this morning as you drag your sin in here that he already took up there he said, man, if you'll just leave it here, if you'll just leave that sin here, that, that secret you've been hiding from everyone, because I know it, I've got, got a blessing called lavish love for you. And I, and I want to pour that, but you've got this all hidden in you. You're all covered up. He could even not have gone to the cross. He could have said, hey, angels, woof. 72,000 could have come down and annihilated everybody, but he didn't. Because he wanted us to know he was man in flesh, he was God in, excuse me, God in flesh, that he wanted to show us that he took everything away from us. There's no need for us to go dooming and glooming in the day. So I wonder where you're at today. I wonder right now if you know who, who you are or you're still looking for who you are. Because God said in Genesis chapter 1, let us make human beings in our image. That our I think it's pretty simple. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's talking about those three. Let's make man in our image. In our image. Think about that. Making them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish and the birds and the cattle, earth, every animal on the face. God gave us power and authority. We're just a little bit lower than the angels. That doesn't say holier than thou. We're just a little bit lower. Are we angels? No, but we're close. But I'm wondering if you know who you are. If you've taken any responsibility in what you've become to today. Or is it, well, I wasn't raised and I didn't have enough and I wasn't paid enough attention in school and I wasn't given enough stars on the board and I ate the cafeteria food or whatever it is. And that's why you are who you are. Are you going to accept, hey, I'm not who I need to be. But I'm not who I was. And I'm striving to be somebody I I can't imagine who I'm going to be. But I'm going to strive every day. And I think about where we're at today. I think about life and death. The shockingness of the news and 
how quickly life is over and how sad it is that we Christians seem to isolate ourselves, lock the doors, bolt the windows down, turn out the lights except for one. That's not who we were created to be. We created to be a city on a hill, beaming bright for all to see. That's who he created us to be. David holding that, that quill and that parchment, trying to find words to say who God was, standing in awe of him. Like maybe tonight, without a cloud in the sky, you might see a star or two. Or maybe in the morning. I saw that orange just exploding through the eastern sky this morning. And just standing there for a moment outside as, as darkness gets pushed back. And just selfishly hearing God say, Hey, Stephen, that's for you. That's for you because I want to lavish my love on you. That's who you are. I wonder, do you know who you are? Or are you believing in what other people say you are? There's a big difference there. Don't let someone else tell you who you are. Let God, who fearfully and wonderfully created you. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you this day, and it's not just another Sunday. This Sunday has never happened. It's never been here. And yet, maybe we came in here with the same idea. It's just another Sunday at church. Father, that's bad on us. Because you're not just God. You're God. The God who created the, the universe. 93 billion light years big. I can't imagine what's out there. And maybe I don't have to. Maybe I just have to go. I just can't imagine how you squeeze that universe down to this, this planet, down to Texas, to Terry County, to Brownfield, to Calvary, to an altar at 402 West Broadway, and you know who I am. And you know me by name. And you want to lavish me with your love. I don't know who's out there today in your house, Father, that so desperately needs that love. They've backpacked those burdens around so long, Father, they think it's part of their lives, but you, you took them to the cross. Allowed them to drop that backpack off. Pick up your blessings. Shine your light. So, Heavenly Father, speak to us through your invitation. Allow us to start realizing who we are in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day that you've given us, Father God, and I thank you for the message provided today, Brother God. We thank you, God, for creating each of us individually with
patience and purpose and love, Father God. And I just pray that throughout this week that we seek your plan for each and every one of us and that we go out and we become a light to the world and spread your love and your grace and your mercy. Uh, I pray for those in Las Vegas. I pray for the life lost. And Father God, I just pray that we will seek you in each and everything we do in our lives and that we will know that there's a loving God out there and that the ways of the world are not the right way. Uh, as we go into this time of offering, I pray you bless the gift and the giver. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Where's your sting? 